LeBron James breaking the scoring record is not just about the NBA. It's not about basketball fans. It's not just about sports or men. It's about the triumph of the human spirit, as Nelson Mandela put it. LeBron James' mom had him when she was 16. How many people have gotten pregnant in that age and been forced to abort or felt the need to abort or gave their kids up? But she stuck with them. He raised them from Akron, where poverty is the automatic situation you're born into, where crime is a real temptation. He didn't do that. He made it. And he has been doing it for two decades at the highest level. And, and the best thing about LeBron is that he never feared to lose sponsorship. They love Michael Jordan because he was an Uncle Tom. You'll never hear Michael Jordan speaking about the injustices black people in America are facing. No. Kareem was involved. Bill Russell was involved. But LeBron just did it in a way that was unapologetic. And he did it with the black woman at his side. We live in a world where black men across the globe are told having a black spouse is, makes you lesser than, it affects your legacy. When you have a white woman next to you, it makes you greater. You know, a white woman gave us Jesus, a white woman gave us a palmer. But LeBron has just totally done it in a different way. We see Tom Brady failing to be a father and failing to be a husband because he's chosen the sport. Not to say he isn't great, but it's just one of the many ways in which LeBron is just built different. He's cut differently. Where I'm from, the, the sons of El, the late kings, uh, Goodwill Zolitini, they're fighting over the, the, who the rightful heir is. They didn't even work for their kingdom. They were born into it and they're fighting. Despite having millions at their disposal, they're fighting. King Charles is going to be coronated and his son isn't speaking to him. LeBron is the king, or hail King LeBron, self-made billionaire who was unapologetic, who was always more than an athlete. Even if LeBron retired today, he'll be the greatest of all times. They won't give him that title because he's got a black woman next to him. But one day they will. And, and he, he can spend the rest of his life just telling his story. And many, many, many will be inspired. Those who come to hear of him, from Yanis, who has troubles for being an immigrant in, in Greece. You know, Greece wants to act like they've always loved Yanis, they haven't. His family starved. It was only when the NBA saw him. You've got athletes from Africa, you've got athletes from Jamaica, from China, all over the world in the NBA. And you've got LeBron's story. Every person who was a basketball enthusiast, who's a human being with power and ability, some of us would have loved to be there, but we couldn't do it. Some of us are working even though we don't want to. We want to celebrate. We want to pop champagne. Can't even afford it, but we'll celebrate with Coca-Cola. LeBron has done it and his story is that of the greatest story. I don't think there is a greater story. I even think LeBron's story is better than Nelson Mandela's. There are people who are still starving today. South Africa has the worst inequality in the world because when Mandela had the chance to change our lives, our social, our economic, you know, he said, nah, I'm good. Like, Jamarant, I'm good. That's why you see South Africa has the worst inequality in the world, the highest level of deadbeat deaths, the highest crime rates, the highest unemploy unemployment. LeBron James' story is, is the greatest story of the past almost four decades. He He's as close to Jesus Christ's fame as a human being will ever be, as close to Jesus Christ's character of not having any sin. You know, Nelson Mandela left three, left two women. <laughs> Nelson Mandela had kids he didn't want to do a paternity test for. LeBron just, he, he's, he's amazing and his story is going to inspire millions of people around the world.